Weather Awareness Week. All this week, we're providing you with information to help keep you safe during the severe weather season. A tornado is rated by the damage they leave behind on what's called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. Meteorologist Jake Dunn breaks down how that works and shares some tornado facts with you that you may not have known. Well, many Kansans probably familiar with the EF scale. We start with a zero. That's winds at least 65 miles per hour. As a reference, severe thunderstorm warnings are prompted when we have winds of 58. So uh, these tornadoes similar to what would be, you know, severe thunderstorm winds, straight line wind damage. Then we start to get into our twos and our threes. We start to see winds of 111 up to 166. This is when you see more significant damage to homes and to businesses. From there, of course, you probably know EF4 and then EF5. That is violent tornado damage. EF5s, uh, fortunately, are quite rare. We don't see too many of those in Kansas or really anywhere in the country. The other term you may be hearing a lot lately is a land spout. Now the difference between a tornado and a land spout is really how they form. A classic tornado starts with what we call horizontal rotation and then we get that rotating updraft or the rotation shifts upwards into the clouds. The funnel comes down makes contact with the ground and then we have a tornado. Now land spouts form a little bit differently. There is no rotating updraft. They still have the swirling winds, but they're usually a lot lighter, kind of like the EF zero, maybe EF one. So land spouts are certainly dangerous, but not quite like what we see with bona fide tornadoes that of course start at zero and go up to EF five. Now we've already got a head start. Um, we had our first tornado officially in liberal. That was on February 26th. That was the earliest tornado we've had since 2007. Where do we go from here? Well, we're not certain, but signs are saying that this is probably going to be a busier than normal year across the plains. Such good information and heading into severe weather season. We want to make sure that your family is prepared for a tornado if it threatens your safety. Meteorologist Adrian Campa joins us this morning from the Storm Team 12 Weather Center to explain the best practices for tornado safety. That's right and good morning Shane. We are quickly approaching severe weather season, so it's important to identify the safest place to go inside your home during a tornado before severe weather strikes. When you're at home, you want to, if you have a basement, obviously get down to the basement if you have one. If you don't, go to an interior room or bathroom and be sure to avoid windows. You'll want to remind your kids when they are at school they should follow drill procedures and if you are unsure what those are, they should ask a teacher. You should go do the same at your job so that way you also know what to do during severe weather. Some places that are not safe include sheds, storage units, mobile homes, and of course your car. If you don't have a shelter, you should look up and take notes of your city's nearest shelters. And lastly, you'll want to keep track of your pets during severe weather and be prepared to grab them in the event of a tornado. And another fact that people forget during severe weather is put on your tennis shoes. Usually tornadoes cause a lot of damage and if you happen to be inside of a tornado and you're walking around, people end up with lots of cuts on their feet. So I want to remind everybody, put on those tennis shoes. From the Storm Team 12 Mobile uh, Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Adrian Campa, back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Adrian. And we